What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to a long-awaited episode of East vs. West. I'm your host, Anthony. And I'm Eddie. And we are the freaking amazing people behind East vs. West, man. How you doing, Eddie? It's been a cool minute. Yeah, man. It's been a really long time. Uh, long yes. old to and plenty to yes. talk about. Plenty to talk about. But before we talk about anything, head on to our Teespring website, uh, Nights of Horror. We have East versus West merchandise out right now. Look at Eddie pulling out his T-shirt right there. That's what it looks like. Oh, it's, it's all messed up. Oh, yeah, it is all messed up, but yep, there it is, right there. East versus West merch oh, with okay. our logos on the back, cross um, collaboration right there on merch right there. So go pick up a T-shirt, a sticker, a uh, hoodie, uh, long sleeve T-shirt, whatever your preferred method is. Look at that. Proud member of the matter. That's an old school shirt. Not a lot of people have that one right there. <laughs> Only the select few do. Yeah. Um, but definitely pick up some merchandise to support the show because we appreciate it and we love what our merch came out, how it looks and everything. So East versus West. There's a lot to talk about. Lots to talk about on the Florida side. Lots to talk about on the Hollywood side. Let's start with the Florida side, man. So, with the opening of Universal Studios Orlando, uh, kind of reopening with the whole new COVID-19 guidelines, we have confirmation now, pretty much, of it being running smooth for the last week or so. I have heard a lot of good things. I've seen a lot of vlogs of how they do things now. It's looking like we're going to have a uh, HHN 30 after all. Um, and, of course, construction has been going uh as planned as well for HHN 30. And we have um, we have confirmation that uh, we are getting the frequent fear pass back for HHN 30 with, of course, the UK ticket sales going on sale. Uh, one of the fans posted up on Twitter a uh, frequent fear pass uh, kind of card that says frequent fear pass for Halloween Horror Nights 30. So that's a good sign that they're bringing back the frequent fear pass, even though social distancing and, and capacity will probably go down a lot, of course, due to COVID. But um, what, what are your thoughts on that, Eddie? Yeah, it's it's interesting that they have those passes available. And, you know, the fact that our, peop our uh, counterparts in the UK get everything in advance because they're planning for this trip well in advance before we do. Um, right. We get that opportunity to see things that are coming out. I wonder if it's not going to be something that's available in the U.S. Uh, um, yeah, they haven't really, as far as tickets for Orlando go right now, it's just standard tickets uh deal tickets where you buy one you get one like free or like a deal on that and of course your ticket packages that come with hotels and stuff like that so that's all that's all i've seen at least for the yeah. US. because they they got to kind of they, they have to manage how many people are able to get that ticket because right. nothing worse nothing would be worse than you purchasing the frequent fear pass and then coming one night and them saying oh we've already met capacity so even though you have a ticket that allows you to come every day you can't come in today Right. So I, I still don't even know what will be it from now until October. Maybe things will be better as far as COVID. I have no idea yet. Uh, if, you keep, if you're keeping up with the world and news, it's not looking good right now. I know it spiked up to 2 million cases officially in the U.S. Um, that was the last big number that I saw, at least. So depending on where we're at from now until October, or at least September, that's when it starts. Um, we'll see more and more of how that's going to work out and how they're going to to um, pretty much um, enforce of what they can do. Maybe they'll limit the days of frequent fear. Maybe they'll be just a frequent fear pass days only um, and a select few ticket holders. So we'll see how that works. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see what's going to happen with the event. I know this is going to be a big year for HHN 30, and I know a lot of fans due to COVID wanted them to push HHN 30 back uh, a year. That way they can get a good year out of it. So I'm, I'm curious to see what's going to come to HHN Orlando. Um, I know, and I know construction has been happening. We've been sending each other pictures um, as far as the construction goes. And so I, I know that that's happening. And uh, what, what are your thoughts on the construction at least? I mean, the, the construction and the, the pictures that have been coming out are from areas where unless you're like a cast member or something like that, you shouldn't have access to. So I'm not sure how 100% those pictures are. Um, I don't have any inside sources telling me how legitimate they are. I know Losh has said that he had an inside source that told him that it's it's legit. Um, but one of my thoughts was this could easily be a construction photo from any year. Um, 
So who knows? I mean, I think construction definitely is going on. Uh, they definitely have to have started by now if it's going to happen. And if tickets are, are being sold, then construction needs to have started. I think it's going to be interesting to see how they do that. In a lot of cases, people complain about those long lines that have the long return back uh, in Orlando. Right. With social distancing, that's almost a positive. Right. So the, the longer the return back, the longer the lines, the, the longer it takes people to go from one place to another, the more they could distance people out instead of having a short return back, which I know was something that they were looking at doing, was eliminating some of those long walks back. But with this, in effect, I, I think the long walks back are actually beneficial for social distancing measures. I think construction in general, I mean, there's, there's obviously a lot of construction going on in, in Hollywood as well. So I, I think it's a, a good sign of the, the event is alive and healthy. Yeah. I think things are definitely going to get better. It's inevitable that cases will grow. Hopefully we could just manage the amount of growth. Uh, but uh, aside from that, I, I think we're all the, all the fans are going to get what they want. Just right. how, how is that, how's that presentation going to be is what's going to be interesting. Right. Uh, did, I, did I miss anything else with at least Florida's? Um, hold on. I'm just moving my fan. Um, as far, so we got construction. We got, we got the free fear pass. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yes. Auditions. So auditions have, been happening. auditions have started, but you could submit your audition video and you could actually check them out. Some people have posted them on YouTube, which right. is obviously another strong indicator that things are moving in the right direction. Um, uh, auditions are, are basically by uh, video submission is how they're doing it right now. I'm not sure if they're going to have an in-person audition later down the road or um, what, what really the process is going to be, but they're taking video submissions. Right, yeah. So over here in Hollywood, I know that your tryout would be in front of people and you'd be in a group a room full of people uh, trying out a specific character or different characters, what they throw out at you. This year is looking a little different. This year, like you did say, a lot of people are submitting their videos to YouTube. So the um, the corporate uh, people can look at those and and pick who they want to come uh, for auditions. I don't like you said. I don't know how auditions are going to be this year. I don't know if they're going to bring in groups of like uh, anywhere from five to ten at a time um, and just audition them and then you know have set times throughout the day for them. Maybe every like fifteen minutes they have another group of ten that come in. Um, you know, give them time in between if they have to sanitize anything, you know, that kind of whole ordeal. But yeah, it, it is very different this year as, as compared to previous years where you would just, you know, submit your name, your headshots, your application, and then hopefully get called for an interview and do an in-person interview where you had to do a bunch of different characters and had to do a bunch of different, like various things just to kind of, uh, you know, nail your audition. So it is very different this year. That, and that, that's going for both coasts as far as I know right now because I know some people actually um, gotten uh, – at least uh, employees gotten auditions over here in Hollywood for a maze that I, that I have heard um, and I've been hearing go around. Um, but I won't say due to – you know I don't want you know, spoilers or anything for if it does officially do come. Um, so I will, I will save that for another video. Um, but for, uh, yeah, man. Speculation. Speculation. I, I, you know, I, I'm just not going to say it. I, I will tell you after this we're done filming, but for for the sake of the audience, for the whole, you know, kind of keeping the surprise and everything, I will keep it down low right now. And and also uh, another thing, just a small thing, but something nonetheless. Uh, the Halloween Horror Nights Orlando Twitter page posted something four days ago for the first time in a while. Um, so another good indicator so i mean they posted something four days ago and then they posted something on on june 4th as well so they got a couple things and i know also that we've been getting little rumors here and there of announcements maybe coming soon for orlando um obviously they can start announcing originals if they really wanted to but as far as shared properties go that's a communication between both parks as to how they want to go about doing that um yeah. officially over here as of this recording Hollywood is not open yet. It's it's set to open in July, I believe, and um, we have not gotten an opening yet as far as Orlando. I think, I think a lot of the Orlando parks they were just giving them a shot to see how their um, 
you know, guidelines worked and how they can go about opening the park with the whole social distancing and the whole um, sanitizing and everything. They're, they're kind of doing like a little test run out in Orlando to see how that would work so other parks um, can come about and open in California, i.e. Um, Universal Studios and Disneyland. Uh, Disney World, of course, is opening up, uh, I think, believe this week it actually opened up. Today, I think it opened up, actually. Disney World? Disney World, yeah. Some parts of Disney World actually opened up today, right? Um, I don't know when, no, Disney World, I thought was July 11th. The July 11th. Okay. So yeah, Disney World has submitted plans and I know Disneyland is doing the same thing and Universal Orlando is already doing an opening for, um, select few guests and they're going to be opening the same thing over here in July. But City Walk is open much like how they did out in Orlando, yeah. the City Walk first and then they did the theme park. So that's actually really good news for a haunt season this year, at least with a uh, Universal studio. So that's really yeah. good. Yeah, um, and uh, just on that point, go check out uh, SoCal and Lodge. They've been posting a lot of the yes. first, first on the scene type of videos for both East and West Coast. The the collaboration yeah. is working really well for them. Um, but uh, yeah, the I, I think um, as far as like the how they've been doing, just to kind of get track back on that, they've been doing really good. And I, I'm actually I, in my last video, I said I'm really proud to be a Universal Studios fan because. Although I love Disney, I'm Universal first, um, right. and they were first on the scene. They've been doing really well. I think part of the reason why they opened up Orlando first was because look how tall he is; his head almost hits the ceiling. Right. <laughs> but uh, right. what's it called? Right. They opened up Orlando first because it's it's so large that right. social distancing is is possible. You know, they they got three parts: Volcano Bay, Islands of Adventure, and Universal Studios. In addition to that, all those parks are pretty big. Um, but yeah. I, I think just in general, Orlando's done a pretty good job, and you know, even with circumstances of cases of cases like growing, um, I, I think they're they'll be able to mitigate the risk for the patrons at least in their parks. Definitely, no, I agree. Um, it's been really good to see Orlando kind of follow those guidelines and, and do their best to kind of open the park and let guests in. Um, of course, when the park opened, at least. Um, you know, it wasn't like officially like full on every show was open and, you know, a lot, a lot of like stuff was still closed. And we're starting to see that now more with, um, of course, you know, they just uh, sop open Born, the stuntacular show. Um, and, you know, you're starting to see how they're going to social distance people sitting down at shows, i.e. when Losh went to go see the uh, the horror makeup show. You saw how they did it like every other, like every two seats, they, they separated people. And if you were with a party, you know, you sit with your party and then every two seats, it's like separated or something like that. Um, but I, it, it does kind of, I, I'm just still a, a little bit, you know, I, I just want to know what the guideline and the policy will be when they open up Horror Nights. You know, with Horror Nights, the line, lining situation is a little bit different. It's a little bit more close. So that's why I'm kind of waiting to see what it's going to be like as far as when Horror Nights opens, uh, how many people are going to be allowed into the park each night and what's going to happen as far as social distancing goes with the lining. Are they going to do a virtual queue system? Are they going to let like so many people in at a time that can fill the line? I don't know how it's going to work, honestly. And, I, and that's something uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we get to hear in the next coming months. Yeah, even scare acting. I mean, their role is going to be greatly impacted because they probably can't come as close to you as they used to. You know, they right. get up all up in your face that in Vamp 85. Um, so... That's going to be who works a street position, though. I mean, that's just how it is. You know, that's their job is to scare you in between each maze you go through. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it'll be interesting. But I, I think as far as uh, whether or not it's going to happen and all that, all that speculation out there, I think you can throw that out the window. It's it's happening one way or another. How right. it's happening and how it's going to go down is the part that is still a variable that we're unfamiliar with, at least not 100 uh, percent. Right. But it's happening, people. It's happening. Um, shifting gears now to the Hollywood side of things. Lots of news coming out uh, in Hollywood right now. Um, we have a guy right now that's been doing a lot of great work out there. And I told him I'd shout him out because he does amazing work. And um, he keeps doing amazing work for us right now who can't get to the theme parks because of them obviously being closed. But we, we, we're still trying to find ways to get them construction updates. And that's uh, Santa Clarita Drone lately has been going to uh, Six Flags, you know, Universal Studios. Every now and then he'll make a trip out to Knott's. Um, anything park he can fly his drone over legally, he does. And um, 
lately he's been doing a lot of Universal Studios uh, flyovers, and we're getting to see construction happening. Now, the Waterworld maze is looking just near completion. They got a facade up. The maze is all the way up. And a lot of people right now are speculating that is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was the secret IP that is replacing the rumored Gremlins maze. Or, yeah, it was Gremlins that was uh, that got kind of canceled out at the end. But it, that's the secret IP that was supposedly replacing that. Um, and uh, from the facade that we've gotten in the shot, it looks very much so that it might be a Texas Chainsaw Massacre maze. Um, me, personally, I know a lot of people are kind of shitting on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre coming back to Horror Nights. I personally like Leatherface. He's one of my favorite, and of course, he's part of the um, the Titans of Terror. So you can't go wrong with a little Leatherface. And I, and I know the same would go if, like, a Halloween maze would go. You'd fully back that because you'd be oh, a like, Halloween fan. Yeah, but I, I, I back Leatherface. I, I, I back li literally any of the Titans. They, they deserve at least – there should be – or I, I would never argue with at least one spot being a Titan every year. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Either yeah. one of them, they yeah. they always deserve a spot at the event. That event, I mean, a part of that event was built on their backs to begin with. Um, so I, I think, you know, if, and as a horror fan, most horror fans are going to agree with that as well. Well, and not to mention one of uh, HHN Orlando's most memorable years is when they when Jack the Clown was hosting the Titans of Terror. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that's one I remember big time because the commercial for that was just amazing of course you had jack the fortune teller and he put down the cards of uh freddie michael and leatherface and uh or no freddie uh freddie jason and leatherface i'm sorry yeah and um you know the guy goes so what's my future and then he goes you, you don't have one and then they all pop out and they kill him which easily is probably the most uh, memorable year of horror nights that i remember that was back when i was a kid watching it on youtube because i was too scared to go um but Hands down, yeah, I, I do agree with that statement. At least, if not every year, every other year, a Titan should, you know, come back. You know, that way they get a break off and then a return. You know what I mean? So, um, me personally, I was hoping we were going to get Halloween, uh, Blumhouse's Halloween, being that Halloween Kills is is slated to come out this year, which I still hope that's uh, on track to come out this year due to, you know, with COVID, everything's been pushing back. But it's looking like movie theaters as well are, are going to start opening up, so we might we might still have that slated to come out this year. But I was hoping it was going to be Halloween 2018 because, you know, that would have been a great marketing point for, like, you know, watch the first movie, go to the maze, and then go see the new one in theaters now. You know what I mean? So I thought it would have been a great marketing campaign, at least for Halloween Kills. But uh, hopefully next year, maybe we'll get both of them. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe he's waiting until the trilogy's done to do all three of them, at least Murdy. But I don't know yet. The, the fat lady hasn't sung on any of the speculation out there. So uh, who knows? It could still come. It's a possibility. Yeah, I mean, yeah. up till we get the announcements, which it's going to be interesting how they do the announcements. As of now, I think both coasts have plenty of time to still create a pretty decent buildup. Right. But at the end of June, if nothing's been said, then no, they they everything's going to be bunched up and released, and I I will find it to be a very interesting challenge for marketing and creative to get people just as excited with some of these IPs as they would if they had plenty of time. Right. Because right about – usually right about this time, we should have gotten at least two or three announcements. Uh, Orlando maybe like four or five, you know, because yeah. they need the originals in between. So at, at the pace that things were going, we, we should have gotten a, an announcement like in January. But then I think things started going south at the beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah. So – uh, we'll see what happens with announcements. But as far as construction goes with HHN Hollywood, um, some good news came out with Santa Clarita, jo Santa Clarita Drone's recent video where he actually flew over, of course, the Metro sets and uh, in the back of the Mummy. And we are finally able to say at least two tents are back in the Metro sets, of course, in the Creepshow area where Creepshow was last year. Um, it was uh, seen that there's two tents back there, meaning that there might be two mazes back there this year which is very interesting for me because uh i thought it was always perfect for one maze and of course the line but it looks like they're doing two mazes back there um and from what i've heard and this is just all rumor i don't know if any of this is true but this is what the word that's been going around lately that the terror tram will not be or the terror tram will be making a return this year so the terror tram garage area uh are we're losing those two mazes so i wonder if they're trying to double up with the same amount of mazes uh, for the for you know last year, for this year, so they're they're doubling up in the back lot because usually in the back lot we get three, 
um, one on the big brick facade and then one kind of out like near the like the metro set itself um, and then one behind the, the giant uh, wall facade so usually we get three and it's looking like if 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 they keep going of what they do in previous years we might be getting four back there this year so I'm curious to see what they were um, one of the facades right now is looking like a book of some sort and a lot of people are speculating creep show season two um, but it could be something completely different. Uh, that's just the big speculation that's going around right now. Um, uh, but I don't know, man, I I'm excited to see what those two mazes are going to be and how they're going to line that this year, as far as the line goes, cause it's going to be interesting. There's not very much, a lot of space there for two mazes, yet alone two mazes and two lines. So I'm curious to see how they're going to make that work as far as line control goes. Yeah. I, I mean, line control, they, they definitely can't do less houses. Yeah. Uh, they, they have to do the same amount as last year, if not more, which right. is typical in both parks, because I think both parks are basically maxing out their space. Um, but I, I guess we'll see how they pull this all off. It's going to be interesting. I'll, I'll be there for sure. I'm already, I'm waiting for August to hit for the annual pass holder appreciation month so I could book my hotel. Um, but, not, I mean, the, the event's coming together. Once yeah. we first announcement it's going to be surreal yeah. it's going to be so so needed at least for us creators and the community who watches our our videos yeah. um, but what how, how it goes down from there is going to be the interesting part we're going to have to be busting out east versus west content like week after week after week after week man watch them not have any ips that'd be interesting i know right all originals this year for each each uh each yeah that, that, that would be real interesting they that'd be cool. If budgets are down and they they don't expect as many people, I mean that's a feasible outcome. Yeah. Um, another construction update that we got this year or uh, recently too was the mummy queue in the back of the mummy. The tent finally went up for after like a month being not up. A lot of people were starting to speculate that it wasn't coming back this year. Uh, tent went up and the layout for the maze actually went out as well. Uh, also rumored to be uh, uh, another rumor going on as well is stage 29 where they've hosted stranger things the last two years in Hollywood uh, has rumored to start construction in there. No one right now can tell right now because of course that's a closed set. They closed the door so you can't really see inside that. So that's rumored to be um, haunting of Hill house this year. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see if they're going to bring that property to life. Um, and I'm thinking that's going to be the staple property this year for both events. Which one? Uh, Haunting of Hill House. Oh my God! I hope so. I, I mean, I, I know I just I, said, I, "What if they don't bring any IPs?" Go ahead. Uh, I, I know I just said, "What if they don't bring any IPs?" But if they're going to bring one from the speculation map, that's probably the one that I'm counting on the most. Right. Um, I think if it does come to the event, that's going to be like the staple property, like how Stranger Things was the last two years. I think that would be one of the major staple properties, and. If Billie Eilish is also rumored to come to the event, I think that's going to be another staple for the event as well. They usually do about three staples that you'll see on the like the ads and stuff. Um, so I think Haunting a Hill House and Billie Eilish is what's going to really sell the event this year if they decide to do uh, you know, the merchandising and, and, of course, the advertising for this event. Those will be the two that you see a lot. Yeah, unfortunately for Haunting a Hill House, Netflix hasn't really done a great job of keeping it relevant. They... They had the first season, and then they announced that there would be a second season, but it hasn't been, like, consistent announcement or the season coming out so that the hype is still there. Um, I, I wonder if they were going to start filming soon, and then COVID hit, and then they just they shut everything down. That's why they haven't really done anything yet. But w when did it release? I feel like it released, like, a while ago. Wasn't it, like, last October or last September or last summer, I believe, or something or around there? I, I, was, I thought it was, like, last year or I, I could have sworn it was last year, I think. Okay. If that's the case, maybe my, my memory is just failing me, and I, I feel like it's it's been around for a little bit longer. Yeah. Because um, I could have sworn it was speculated for last year's Halloween Hornet. I think because it had just come out last year, so that's probably why. I, so it must have came out, like, in the beginning of last year or in the summertime. Maybe. Um, but e either way, I feel like they, they, uh, they could have done a little bit better at keeping it relevant. I, I actually have to look this up. I feel like it's, yeah. it's been a I, I sworn it was last year. It may have been the end of 2018, but I could have sworn it was last year, like I'm in the very beginning of last year. Googling it right now. Um, don't let me yeah, get. I mean. 2018. 
2018 of what of what month? Uh, October 12th of 2018. Okay, so it's been roughly about a year now, uh, going on two years. Yeah. But uh, I think with a good show like that being that it's going to be every season is going to be a different story. Um, the next season going to be The Haunting of Bly Manor, which is supposed to be a very terrifying story and a very like unique story as its own. Um, I think with it doing that, kind of creating a new season based off, kind of like an American Horror Story approach where they every season is different. Yeah. Um, I think it, it's good that they take their time to write it out because the way Haunting the Hill House ended up, from start to finish, that show just had you going and every episode ended. You just wanted to know what was the next episode. I think I binged that whole show in one day because I just could not stop watching it. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely, I, I don't know if it was in one day, but I I finished watching it pretty quickly because it was that damn good. I, I think I yeah. actually didn't watch it all in one day. I stayed yeah. up, in, I might have gone up to like the next morning at 6 a.m. Yeah, because it was one of those shows where you're like, okay, that story, you know, that story's done, they're done talking about that. But then when you least expect it, it would come back to that relevant point of, holy shit, I thought they were done talking about that. It has a bigger meaning than we thought. Yeah. So... No, and if they really bring that to Horror Nights this year, I feel like a lot of, uh, at least psychologically, that maze can be amazing. Hell yeah. That, so. and aesthetically, too. I mean, yeah. a Victorian mansion, and you're walking through it. And yeah. A broke neck lady. Definitely. So, yeah, that's basically it right now, at least on the Hollywood side. No tickets have been announced as far as sales go. They usually wait till about August to announce tickets for uh, HHN Hollywood. Um, and Universal Hollywood itself has not opened yet, but it's going to be opening in July. And you can bet that like people like me and Scott will be at the parks doing construction updates of our own. So we can kind of, uh, keep everybody informed and, you know, Santa Clarita drone. Um, I don't know what he'll, the state of him will be like after the park does close or open. Um, so we'll see what happens with him after the park opens, but I'm hoping he does stay relevant and, and stays in the community because, if it wasn't for him, I don't think we'd be getting these construction updates like we have been, which has been amazing. And, and just seeing flyovers in general of the parks have, with them being empty has just been amazing. So, yeah, that's that really does it with me. Do you want to add anything before we, we log off? Uh, yeah, let's just go over something really quickly, something that uh, we were talking about in the group today a lot. Uh, and Quick shout out to everybody on the group. For those of you that don't know, uh, we're part of the, the Booze Brothers. Uh, the Booze Brothers. And we're not talking about drinking. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, right? Yep, takes a sip. Right, but uh, you got SoCal, myself, Anthony, Losh, Connor, Chris, uh, the hotline. Yeah. Um, I think and that's Sammy. It. And Sammy, yep. Oh, can't forget about Sammy. Sammy, I'm can't sorry. Save the best for yeah. life. That's what I did. That's what I did. But, um... We've been talking about the recent opening of the Born Identity. Uh, I'm a fan of it, honestly. Yeah. I re- I thought it would. I watched it this morning. It's phenomenal. I think. I think it's great. I mean, it's not better than T2, but I think it's great. I I don't know. I've heard a lot of good things about it, which is interesting. I I honestly I thought replacing a sit down show with another sit down show was going to be kind of lame, and mostly since uh, I was saying that. You know, the born identity is kind of irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, but from the, the feedback and the reactions that I've seen, I'm actually pretty excited to go check it out and quite possibly maybe checking it out very soon. So fingers crossed. Uh, so if you're not going to watch it, I hope you do get to check it out because I think they do a very good job of blending screen on screen effects with reality, which I thought was that's what made that show practical. unique and amazing. Yeah, practical, practical, practical. with on screen. Like, because it goes from screen to real life like real quick, so it was just, it was just I was just blown away of how it looked and, and how how smoothly it flowed. Um, me, I've been I I've only seen Jason Bourne. I have to go back and watch him, but from that movie, I mean, it makes me want another Bourne movie. And this, in a kind of a way, is a mini sequel to a Bourne movie, which I think is it's really cool. And like it, sadly to say, I'm gonna come out and say it right now, I am not gonna be able to attend HHN 30 this year. And that's due to the fact of just me with work. I'm, I'm having issues with attendance and, um, you know, Sammy moving out to Arizona. So he can only afford to come out to California this year and he can't afford to do both. And I don't want to go without him. So sadly this year, I'm going to be the one man left out of uh, the Booze Brothers taking over HHN Orlando. And I'm very, very disappointed in that. 
I am trying to work something out where maybe I can go later in October, but I don't think anyone else will want to go at that point. Uh, maybe I can meet up with like Losh and and Chris. Chris maybe, but like you won't be there. I don't know if Con- maybe Connor will be there, but like yeah. you won't be there and Scott won't be there maybe. So uh, we'll see what happens. I'm I'm very much trying my best and hoping for the best for me to go this year because I really want to because I really want to check out the park. I really want to check out the event. But right now, it's not looking too good as far as the date that we all have planned to go, which really sucks because I really wanted to go this this year so bad. But um, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe the stars will align. There's still yeah, months know. away. There's, yeah, there's yeah. still plenty of time. We'll see what what happens. Maybe I win the lottery, and then I could just buy everyone's trip. Yep. Full-time YouTuber. Right? Um, <laughs> but no, born, stuntacular, looks amazing. I fully support it. Again, I'm a fan of T2 3D, and I don't think it's as good as T2 3D, but I think it's it's really it's pretty up there. It's like probably right below T2 3D for me at least. Did you guys have T2 3D in Hollywood? I did, and it got replaced by Despicable Me, which was horrible. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, then at least ours is getting replaced by something better. But yeah, born. <laughs> I mean, we got Despicable Me as, as well. Fucking, now I want a born show for Hollywood. So Hollywood, if you're listening. Let's work on a boring show, man. I want to see that. Yeah. Or we'll, we'll get our, our subscribers to revolt against you guys if you don't. Yeah. You've been <laughs> warned. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Hollywood born show. Yeah. You've been warned. 1,300 people will show up at your doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> replace, replace the freaking animal actor show. Put a born show. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, that's going to do it, I think. Are we, are, we, are we good now? Did we get everything out? Yeah, I think we got everything out. Yeah, it's been a good return. Uh, we're gonna try to stay consistent like we were. Um, I know that recently you just got a new job, so your hours are looking a little bit better now. Yeah, man, my hours should get a lot better. I should have some more time for the YouTubes. Right, and I, I'm still waiting on your on your maze treatment. So yeah, that, well, I, it got extended. My my deadline got extended. So now you got more time. Yeah, <laughs> and, and now uh, I've seen the first the first episode, which. I'm glad I did because freaking Hotline went like all out freaking special effects. Right. He like so, I, I yeah, do it him. Episode one on the channel. <laughs> Check it out, man. Hotline killed it with his with his um his pitch. I'm not gonna say what it was if you guys haven't seen it yet, but God did it blow us away. It was, it it was, was amazing that you would never expect come to the event. <laughs> his video was directed by Michael Bay. Right? Yeah, and it starred Will Smith, so it's crazy. Go check it out. Definitely crazy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, before we log off, remember we have East versus West merch on our on my merch st- our shop. Uh, me and Eddie released that very awesome logo designed by my cousin Andrew Zaragoza, uh, and uh, it, it's an amazing design. Me and Eddie both have our T-shirts. We both have stickers, um, and we uh, didn't spot them today. I actually wore mine yesterday, thinking we were going to film yesterday, but we didn't. So. Um, <laughs> I'm wearing my my They Live T-shirt today, but um, but he got he's got his Knights of Horror merch on, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, but East versus West merch on the website, links in the description below. Definitely get some merch, support the show, take some pictures, send it to uh, tag me and Eddie both in the pictures. We will definitely reshare on our accounts because we want to see you guys rock our merch, man. We we love how our merch came out. We love our fans, and we wanna we want you guys to hopefully love the merch too. <laughs> Yep, and also uh, follow us on our social medias. Uh, subscribe to both channels. Uh, right. You got Entertainment, you got the Knights of Horror, and then you got us on Twitter, uh, Instagram. Uh, do you have Facebook for Knights of Horror? I do, I do have a Facebook. It's connected through my Instagram. Okay. I, I mean, I have a Facebook as well, but it's not like the most active one that I'm on. Yeah, it's not the most uh-huh. active. But yeah, Instagram and Twitter, Twitter. Twitter are my most active, so you got that. Also, big shout out to the Booze Brothers. Follow the Booze Brothers, Zombie Chris. Connor, Florida, uh, Lost TV, SoCal Exploring, The Haunt Line. Go follow them all. And you forgot Sam. Sam's on, <laughs> no, Sam on Nights of Horror, so he already, you know, he's, you know, you can't really follow him unless you want to follow him on his social media, but that's not yeah. it. But go follow the Booze Brothers, um, and we love each and every one of you, and hopefully we'll see you soon for another episode of East vs. West. Deuces.